you can pass the handouts out for this morning. Good morning. Amen. We welcome you this morning. Amen. Our live streamers that you're on this morning, we thank God for you. Most of you on live stream have already received the handout. Hallelujah. Let's pray. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. This is the day we go to court against the enemy. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. We declare our redeemer liveth. And we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Come on down. So we give God all the glory. We thank God for pastor this morning. Give him uh, honor. And to all of you, are the family of God, amen, and those that are on live stream, amen. Something is going to happen today. Are y'all ready? All right, y'all, let's put your hands together. Y'all ready? Those on live stream, something is going to happen today. At about 10 o'clock last night, I began working on my message, but I had been praying all week. If I say all week, so I thought I had it. Those of you that teach and preach, you know how you, you, you feel like, oh, I got it, I got it. 10 p.m. So I began to search my heart, search the scriptures. I said, Lord, what, what is the word? And seven hours later, are y'all in here? I'm going to preach this. Seven hours later, 5 a.m., I had the word. And so when I walked in this morning, and though, you know, we, we are kind of scattered, there's a few of us on site, then there was on live stream. If it had just been one person, I'm going to preach. That's how I feel this morning. And this is a two-part word, I believe, I, I think. 
So next Sunday, we're going to continue because I couldn't get it all in. But sometimes we really just have to wait on God because I could have preached something else, but you know, those of you that are ministers of the gospel, you know when you got it. And you know when you're trying to fake it to make it. Right, can I get amen? I know when I'm trying to push it and say, okay, this, I got this, I could preach this, I could preach this. And the Lord said, no. At 5 a.m., seven hours later, and I realized that the warfare that's going on in here this morning, some, some of you were rushed to the hospital, and there's just a lot of things going on there. The enemy tried to scatter us. But it's because of the word. It's not because we're not faithful. It's not because we don't love God. We are in a war. And we're getting ready to go to court. This morning. All right. earthly court right now is in session, but we're going to the high court in a few minutes. You may be seated. It's time to take the devil to court. Say it with me. It's time, go ahead and put that up, to take the devil to court. And I said earlier that this is probably going to be a, a two-part message, maybe three. I don't know yet. But I realized that the only dealings I've ever had with the courtroom is when you get summoned. And usually I didn't want to go, and you didn't either. But you've got to go to court sometime, even if you are... A, a juror. But other than that, I really was clueless about the power of the court. Our text today is very powerful. Job, you know, we've been studying Job. Hopefully you've been on on Wednesday nights. But the book of Job Chapter 1, if you'll stand, we're in the court. Stand up. The scriptures didn't really be read. Amen. Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 12. This is the New Living Translation. I love the wording of it. It says, one day, the members of the heavenly court. Did you all see that? Mm -hmm. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and the accuser. If I say the accuser, I want to say and the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered and said, I have been patrolling the earth. I've been watching everything and everybody, what's going on. Uh, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all of the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear you. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You've made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12, all right, you may test him, the Lord said. But whatever you want, do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him. 
So Satan left the presence of the Lord. And that key verse again, verse 6, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord from the, in the heavenly court. You may be seated. So there is a heavenly court. There is a court higher than the Supreme Court. Y'all do know that. And this message today comes out of somewhat of a frustration. And I don't know about you, you, there may be things you prayed about for years. And you have, and you've done everything you could. You prayed, you fasted, and we're talking years. And this year we celebrate 130 years, but it's time to go to court. It's time to take the devil to court. 130 years is a long time to be praying and crying out to God, and sometimes progress has been slow. The other text that I want to include this morning is in Numbers 23:19. God is not a man. Say it with me. God is not a man. Say it again. God is what? He's not a man that he should lie. Because as men, as women, as human beings, we have a tendency in our nature to lie. But God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? What he said, he's going to do it. Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? I was trying to share with you how to go to court. <laughs> That's not a path I've ever gone, Pastor, and I've not been to court on anything. But one of the things about filing a lawsuit, you got to find a lawyer. And people that try to re represent themselves on their own, it's dangerous because they really don't know the ins and outs of law. Uh, but you've got to search for a lawyer. And, and I want to say this morning, we've got a lawyer. Huh? And his name is, yeah, so we've, we've got a lawyer. And, and actually, all fee arrangements have been made. He has paid in full for us to go to court any time. I felt good about that. Well, we got a lawyer. We got an advocate. And his name is Jesus. But we've not always uh, seen him in this light. We've read about it. We've read scripture. But So you've got to find a lawyer, and then you've got to fill out paperwork. It's some paperwork involved, and we don't have to do that because the paperwork is right here. Uh, can I get a witness? Let me see your paperwork this morning. Because every now and then, when you go to prayer, you better have your paperwork. Because Satan is a legalist, but he's also a liar. Search for a lawyer. Make your fee arrangements. Fill out the paperwork. And in that paperwork, you have to declare who, what, when, where, and why. You've got to put all the details in. And then the trial date will be set. The court will be in session. And in most cases, you may need witnesses. But guess what? This morning, you are the witnesses. But I found that we got some witnesses on live stream. Come on, give me five. Yeah, we got, some wit we got enough witnesses against the accuser. Has he ever accused you? Let me see your hand. Has the devil ever lied on you? Has he ever come up against you? I I we got enough witnesses this morning. So on your handout, I want to give you these points up front because I'm going to move kind of quickly. Things I want you to think about today and the days in, in coming. Because one of the things, before I get to this, that disturbs me is how Christians tend to blame God for everything. 
And so the points I want to leave with you, you don't, they're right there. You don't have to write them down. When bad things happen in your life, stop always blaming God. People in the world do this. They don't, the first thing they want to say, God did this, but they never blame the accuser. God is not a man that he should lie. Everything he says is truthful and will come to pass. So if that's you this morning, every time something doesn't go your way, you automatically say, God did it. Because you don't know his character. He's not a, he's not a what? Man. <laughs> Secondly, start accusing Satan instead of accusing God. Careful what comes out of your mouth because God, he is judge. But you don't want to get on the bad side of the judge. <laughs> Thirdly, take the devil before the court of heaven in your prayer life. And we're going to demonstrate that today and also next week. We want to begin to demonstrate what that looks like to take your petition before the court of heaven. There is a high court. And fourthly, trust God fully. Say fully. No matter what you're going through, God is not a man. Stop trying to treat God like a man. That he would lie. And that's what I love about Job. In this, this Bible study on Wednesday nights, uh, Job, after all what he's went through, he still trusted God fully. And number five, don't serve God just for the good times, but for all times. We are not exempt from hard times. Say la. Think on that, if you would, this morning. So I want to just breeze over, and then we're going to demonstrate it this morning to get into the court of heaven. And this is coming from a teacher from Dr. Uh, Taquita Baker, and I love how she set this up, and, and we've had uh, this teaching earlier, but you've got to approach God the right way because he's holy. And so this morning, he's going to bring us into the court, say the court. But the first thing is that you must approach our holy God. He's holy. But then you ask the heavenly courts to be seated to hear your case. There's a great cloud of witnesses there in heaven right now as we speak. But they are the heavenly court. Even the angels are part of the heavenly court. You want them to come in and be seated to hear our petition this morning. You ask the witnesses, the cloud of witnesses, to sit in the court on our behalf. Say the witnesses. Mm -hmm. And this morning, even this morning, we have more than two or three gathered in his name that can agree and vouch for the way that the enemy has come against this house 130 years and the way he's come against you in your life. We have witnesses this morning. And then you must accept the forgiveness and grace through Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. Everybody say, it's really finished. Mm -hmm. And when we get before the courts, as we will stand this morning, we are going, they're, they're going to know our case, what it entails, and why we call the court. Even though God is all-knowing, you still have to ask him. You still have to, in a sense, fill out your paperwork. <laughs> you have to give yourself a voice and make your request known. Say, make it known. Then you've got to call your adversary to court. Uh, the enemy's here this morning. He tried to shut things down this morning. But the adversary, the accuser, is here. Every demon, every demonic system and situation that thinks it has a legal right to bind us and to operate 
It's illegal. But sometimes we have to take the devil to court. Then we're going to ask Jesus to release his angels. Say angels. To counteract and overthrow principalities and powers operating that have tied us up and tied us down. We're going to ask Jesus to judge our adversaries and deliver us from legal and illegal charges and attacks against us. By faith, we'll declare that we are delivered from the adversary. This morning, we're going to decree a victory that has probably not ever been decreed in 130 years. The devil is scared this morning. But I had to get in the face of God to get it. I had to stay right there seven hours to get it. Decree your victory and pray as the Holy Spirit leads you in declaring your redemption and breakthrough. We may have to war a little bit this morning as we make these decrees. And we won't stop praying until we feel a release this morning by the Holy Spirit. If necessary, use the work of the cross and his blood in the courtroom. I love number 14, command restitution of damages and anything the enemy has stolen from you, stolen from the people of God, stolen from this old place. And we will spend time praising and thanking God. Everybody say Job, Brother Job, Brother Job. There are things that Job went through that he could not explain. He was not privy to the conversation over him between Satan and God. The Bible says that Satan was going to and fro, and he went up to the court. Now, he couldn't go to the third heaven, but the second heaven level, I imagine him pacing and walking before God. He had been kicked out of the high place. Are y'all in here? He had already been kicked out, lost his position, but he could still go before God and conversate. And that conversation was over Job, a truly righteous man. I don't know what you're going through, and I don't know how long you've been going through it, but consider there has been a conversation over you. Mm. I said consider that because you walk with God that there's been a conversation over you. And you can't figure out what is going on. I can't figure out. It looks like I can't prosper. I can't pro uh, go forward. I can't sleep. I don't know what is going on. I want to caution you. Don't blame God. Because he recommended you. There is no, for us, get out of jail free card, or I call it get out of suffering free card. <laughs> you know, we would love to have some of them cards. But life has a way of making us go through the process to get to the other side. We're not exempt. Say, I'm not exempt. We're not exempt from the left hand of God. Job experienced the right hand and the left. You know, that's in the Bible, the left hand. No person or nation is exempt from suffering and struggle. But is it God's fault that we suffer and that we struggle? No. Sin entered the world. Well, why are people sick? Sin entered the world. And some of your friends and relatives are always questioning you, how come God did this? And how? Wait a minute. Have you ever heard of Satan? the accuser? Well, let's put some blame on him. The better still, let's go to court. Job 23, 9 through 10. Listen to the scripture. When God, when he works on the left hand, next slide please. Keep going. There we are. Job 23. 
when he or when God works on the what hand? Left hand. I want you to see it for yourself. I didn't make it up. I said when he works, when God works on the left hand. Job said, I, I cannot behold him. When he turns to the right hand, I can't always see him, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. This is such a revelation that Job has experienced the left hand and the right hand. We love the right hand, don't we? But today, I want to declare God has two hands. Very few Christians are aware of the difference between the right and the left hand of God. For the most part, we have taught that God is one arm. You know, he's got one hand. He's goody, goody, goody. The thought of God having a right hand and a left hand should not be strange to us. For in the scripture, we find the right hand is mentioned many times, but the left hand is mentioned also on a few occasions. The right hand, few under, left, few, uh, do not understand the left hand, but the word left, Mean, meaning dark. From the meaning of these two words, it's very easy to understand that God's right hand is his strength or his wonderful ability. But the implication of the right hand is the good hand. And that God chooses at times to use the left. I suggest that we learn to trust the master from whatever hand he uses. We eat from both hands of the master. We should eat without complaint. Uh, we eat table food and scraps, and if the master is a little disciplinary, we will bear it and receive it at his hand. We never turn on the master, but the servant will give his life for the master. Now, we know we cannot rebuke God, though we may try, nor can we stop or rebuke the left hand. For there are some things we must go through for the greater glory. So Job finds that, he, that God has two hands. Let's look at the right hand. In the right hand, are you with me? There's pleasure. In the left hand, there's pain. In the right hand of gathering, he gathers, but in the left hand, he can scatter. In the right hand, all power. In the left hand, could be prison. There in the right hand, there's plenty. Oh, we love plenty. But in the left hand, there may be poverty. In the right hand of life, there's life. But in the left hand, could be death. God works with his left hand and allows us to have the hedge removed. You know, some of us won't pray unless the hedge is removed. You get that. Y you know, because we want everything good. But some of us wouldn't even pray if the hedge is not removed from our lives. Opposition. The left hand of God is there to try us and test us and prove us. Say, prove me, Lord. The left hand gives Satan permission to act in our lives. But Satan is a pawn, but he's also limited. In the right hand, if I say the right hand, or you know we love the right hand, it's promotion. But in the left hand, there's demotion. You know, demotion is not always bad. Because demotion, you get on your face and begin to pray again. In the right hand, there's light, but in the left hand is dark time. In the right hand, there's strength, but in the left hand, weakness. In the right hand, there's victory. In the left hand, there can be defeat. You know, anybody ever been, defeat, been defeated? Uh -huh. In the right hand, compassion of God, but in the left hand is judgment. Oh, we don't like that. And people say, well, I don't know why God is judging and why he's supposed to be all good. He is good. 
but our God has a right and a left hand. His right hand, the blessing. The left hand is curses. That, I mean, what are you saying? God said, I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. There's a right hand of justice and the left hand of captivity. Everybody say right hand. Right hand, and I'm building a case right now. I'm building a case. That's in the right hand of God is fruitfulness. But the left hand, there's barrenness. In the right hand, there's God establishes. But in the left hand, there could be destruction. There's the right hand of prosperity. Everybody say prosperity. We love it, don't we? We say prosperity. But in the left hand, there's decline. America is in decline. In the right hand, there's sunshine. But in the left hand, there's storms and rain. Come on now. The right hand, there's protection. But in the left hand, abandonment. Jesus said, why have you left me? Even Jesus on the cross, he felt the right hand, the left hand. There is the right hand of peace and the left hand of war. The right hand of multiplication and the left hand of elimination. In the right hand, strong towers, but in the left hand, siege. In the right hand, there's salvation. Say salvation. But in the left hand, damnation. In the right hand, there's heaven. But in that left hand, there's what? Hell. Come on, give the Lord praise. Put your hands together. This is rich. It's good. I know. I know. I know you feel good now. But let me tell you why God uses his left hand. One is to bring correction in our lives. Write it down. I know you ain't got enough paper, but that's all right. To bring correction due to sin, disobedience, generational iniquity, national corruption. God's left hand, he uses to bring that correction. But here's another one. God uses his left hand to mature us, to grow us up, to mold us and to prove us. Or we'd be cream puffs all our lives. I said, you're weak. I need to strengthen you. I need you to grow up. God uses his left hand to test us, to prove us, to see what's really in our character. Do we love God because he just blesses us? Or do we love him because of who he is? Say lie. Why does God use his left hand? To give us a reward, double for our trouble. To bring balance to our lives so that we will appreciate when he's using the right hand. God uses his left hand to rule Satan and show us that Satan is limited. Say limited. Satan is a limited edition. He's limited in what he can do and what he can accomplish because of God's left hand. The left hand of God will check and renew who you are. And he will use your life to teach others how to trust him. Isn't that what Job's testimony is about? Is the book of Job really about Job? Or is it about God? and how to walk with God, and to remember that God is not a man. Thank God Jesus Christ did not play the exemption card on the cross. Jesus was not exempt himself from the Father's will. He wasn't exempt from suffering and shame. He wasn't exempt from being wounded for our transgression. Uh, he was not exempt from being called Beelzebub being falsely accused, being arrested and beaten, being hung on the rugged cross, being mocked and spit upon. He wasn't exempt from that. He wasn't exempt from being nailed to that old rugged cross. Jesus experienced both hands of the Father. Say not exempt. Not exempt from praying for those who killed him. Not exempt from saving who? The thief on the cross, not exempt from death 
on the cross or being buried in a borrowed tomb. But because he didn't play the exemption card, he finished well and rose on the third day. Now look at somebody and say, when you're going through, turn up your praise. When you're going through, stay prayed up. Yeah, when you're going through, show up for the warfare. Yeah, you know, folks don't show up for warfare. And when you're going through, yoke up with the other saints and word up from the word of God. When you're going through, reach and touch someone else in need. When you're in need, the best thing to do is help someone else in need. When you're going through, armor up for the battle. Step up and go through. Grow up and don't skip the process. As we look at the close of this message, take the devil to court. When do you take him to court? Do you take him to court every day? I don't think so. But you take him to court when you've done all you know to do. And you cannot get a breakthrough. And it's time to take that joker then to the court. The book of Job gives us insight into the court of heaven. But I came to remind you today that Jesus is our advocate. And he will hear our case. And he will defend us against the accuser, for he is my advocate. He's your advocate forever. He's our wonderful counselor. He's our deliverer. He's the faithful witness. Jesus is the lawgiver, and he is the righteous judge. I'm, I'm not talking about a man now. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about Jesus, the just one. He's just. He's our mediator. He's the Lord, our righteousness. He will plead our case. He'll represent us. Because today we're getting ready to go before the court. Job says something profound. Are you ready for this? Job 19.25. But as for me, I know my Redeemer is. Uh, Job didn't have all the insight about the court of heaven. He didn't know about the conversation that went on over his life. He's not understanding, but he still says one thing I do know. I know, everybody say, I know. I know my Redeemer lives, and he will stand up on the earth at last. I know my Redeemer liveth. Whatever my lot, I know my Redeemer lives. And when you're going through a Job season, remember to declare, I know my Redeemer liveth. I will not curse God. and die. And some of you in here, you've been going through, and I came by to tell you, stop trying to die. Come on now. You know you're in here. Oh, I'm ready to die. Stop trying to die and live, but stop trying to die and take that joke of the court and get what belongs to you. Hallelujah. So we must rise up and take the devil to court. Everybody all rise. Kevin, come on, because I'm getting ready now. We're getting ready to go before the court. Y'all not going to sleep. Ain't no need you trying to snooze. Mm -hmm. And I do need war music. Mm -hmm. Let's pray in the spirit right now, everybody. If you can, hear a prayer language. If you don't, just say, Lord, have your way this morning. Come on. Lift your hands up. We're getting ready now to approach the throne. That's it. Come on. Give out our son, daddy, by the way. Give out our son, daddy, come, daddy, out. There are some things. There are some things. There are some things that we must take to the throne room. 130 years here, but I'm ready to see a breakthrough. I'm ready to see a shift. I'm ready to see a change. I'm ready to move forward. Come on, are you? Do we have anybody in here? I got any witnesses up in here today. 
gonna take the devil to court. We're gonna take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court. Come on and all the witnesses in here. Come on. It's time to take the devil to court. Come on. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the, the devil, devil to court, court right now. Say it again. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court. Come on. It's time to take the devil to court right now. Come on, get it in your spirit. It's time. It's time to take the devil to court. Come on. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court right now. Oh, I think you're about to get it. Come on, it's time. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court right now. Give me that tambourine. Give me that. It's time to take the devil to court. Come on, now. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court right now. Say it again. Get it in your spirit. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court. It's time to take the devil to court right now. Listen, listen. Jesus is my lawyer. Say it. Jesus is my lawyer. Come on, come on. Jesus is my lawyer. Right now, right now. That's it. Jesus is my lawyer. Jesus is my lawyer. Yeah. Jesus is my lawyer. Right, right now. now. Listen, listen. God is the judge. God is the judge. God is the judge. On the throne. On the throne. Come on. God is the judge. He's the judge. God is the judge. Come on, come on. God is the judge. On the throne. On the throne. Let's say it one more time. Come on. God. God is the judge. He's the judge. God is the judge. God is the judge. On the throne. Listen, listen. The accusers going down. The accusers going down. The accusers going down. Right now, right now. Come on, come on, come on. The accusers going down. The accusers going down. Come on. The accusers going down. Right now. Today, 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 the accuser. The accuser's going down. The accuser's going down. The accuser's going down right now. Oh. All right, now I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. Come on, begin to pray now. Offer yourself up. We are the witnesses. Come on, come on. I need you to pray. I need you to come out of self. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us and what God wants to do. He brought us on the day. How about it on the day? Come to the day. How say come about it on the day? About it on the day. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we approach your holy throne right now. Come on. On behalf of the village, Second Baptist Redlands, right now, 130 years, we're bringing our charges even now against the enemy. Come on, keep praying. You got to stay focused. We approach you, O oh holy God, and we enter the throne of grace. We come boldly now. Say boldly. Yeah. Boldly before the throne of grace. Father, we ask now that the heavenly court be seated to hear our case. Hear our prayer. Hear our petition. For we are gathered here together. On live stream too. Father, we ask now that the heavenly court be seated to hear our case. 
Now let the books be opened. Now let the books be opened. In the court. In the court. Now let the books be opened. Let the activity of the accuser be exposed. Father, we thank you that the cloud of witnesses sits in the court. The advocate on our behalf. We thank you for our lawyer, Jesus Christ. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our advocate. Right now, in the name of Jesus. We now say, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us when we should have done, should have, could have, but we didn't. Lord God, we thank you that you have paid for us to be forgiven by your blood. We thank you for the finished work on the cross. Come on. We thank you for the finished work of the cross. That no matter what the accuser says, no matter what he does in our personal lives, oh God, when we gather in this place, blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Now we declare before the throne of grace that we are your people and we are the sheep of your pasture. We declare that our sins are are covered our sins are covered that no matter what the accuser has said against this house 130 years we declare that our sins are covered by the blood father we bring before you those that have spoke against the house those that have tried to contain the house every demonic spirit that's tried to stand against the house even the spirit of python to strangle us generation after generation, we bring that before you now in the name of Jesus. Let the courts of heaven know now. We let you know this is our case. We break off now those things that rose up against generation after generation to impede our progress, to contain us so that we would not burst out of these walls and affect the city. Father, we break the spirit of the canker worm. We break every territorial spirit. We come, oh God, and ask you, Lord God, even systemic racism, 130 years of systemic racism, we declare and we bring it before the throne. We declare the enemy will not be able to contain us. He will not be able to detain us. He will not be able to destroy. Mercy, Lord, is our crime. We call the adversary now to the, to the throne room, to the court, every demon, every demonic system, every situation that has had legal or illegal right against us. We bring now the adversary before the judge. We bring the adversary before Jesus Christ, our lawyer. We thank you, Lord. We repent personally and generationally for any sins through our ancestors that were committed. Father, we ask that you would cleanse our slates. I ask your Lord to cleanse our slate. I ask your Lord to cleanse our slate by the blood of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we come boldly before your throne, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to release angels now. Release angels to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, to counteract the devil. We ask you to release angelic hosts to overthrow every principality, every power operating with those tied to our situation. Father God, we come before you and ask your angels to be released to counterattack every weapon of warfare that the enemy has released. Father, we ask that the Lord Jesus would judge the adversary right now. Lord, we ask that you would judge the enemy. We ask that you would judge the devil. We ask that you would judge the adversary. We, we ask that you would judge the accuser of the brethren. Judge him, Lord Jesus. 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 And deliver us from the encampment of the enemy. Father, we thank you now. He better not come to keep praying. Hold on. Come on, witnesses. I got some witnesses still left. Come on, witnesses. Witnesses. By faith, we declare that we are delivered from the, you better not come, did he? The stronghold of the adversary. You better not did it here. We decree our victory right now. Come on, put your hands together. Begin to decree victory. Lord God, we come before you. You're the only one that can deliver us. Come on, keep your hands going. That's, that's warfare right there. We de de decree victory and pray as the Holy Spirit leads us. And we declare redemption. And we declare breakthrough. He better not did it, better not did it. That whatsoever we bind on earth, you said, is bound in heaven. 
He better that whatsoever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. So we declare that there's a loosing of freedom and there's a loosing of your blessing, oh God. There's a loosing of our future where the enemy tried to come in and take our future, Lord God. We declare that our future is loosed to go forward in Jesus' name. Father God, he better not come, did he? We declare that your word is truth and we declare that you are not a man that you would lie. Nothing can overthrow truth. We declare truth from the throne of God. We declare truth, righteousness. You are the righteous judge. We declare it now, Lord. Hear us, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. 130 years, we had to go to court. 130 years, we had to call on your name. 130 years, we had to get some spunk about us and stand up against the devil. Lord God, 130 years, we are not discouraged. But Lord, we thank you that by the Spirit, that it bears witness that we are your people and that we are blessed and that we have been established by you. Now, Lord, open, open the heavens. Uh, open, open the heavens over us. We command restitution of all the damages. We command restitution of all the lies and the damages, anything that the enemy has stolen uh, in the name of Jesus. And we shall become known. Uh, for people have said, we didn't know you were there. And you've been hidden. Where have you been? But we declare now restitution, uh, restitution, uh, that we shall be known as a house of prayer, that we shall be known as a people that love God, that we shall be known as a healing house, for all generations, we demand restitution of all the damages. And Father God, we thank you for the court of heaven. We seal it now in the name of Jesus. Come on and give him thanks. Come on and give him thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. The court. The court of heaven. We will continue to go to court as a people. And you in your own personal life. We're going to talk a little bit more about it on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Now, if you're here this morning and you've got a, a special need, you know you need to go to court on something, come stand right here. Come on something really that you need this morning from the Lord. I seek about our son. The spirit of the Lord is saying to you, it's time to go to court. The enemy has drugged you back and forth. This revelation today, the Lord is saying, he's been waiting. He's been waiting for you to come boldly before the throne. There is a court higher than the Supreme Court. There is a court where Jesus is sitting right now at the right hand interceding. There is a high court that we have not been to. There is a court, and he's waiting. Come on, lift your hands. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, these that have come and those on live stream, you got to go to court on this joker. You already have a lawyer. His name is Jesus. We have the righteous judge, Yahweh, God, Jehovah. He's our righteous judge. And Father, I break now the work of the accuser in your life. I break the work of the accuser in your life. 
I break now. Come on, you all pray with me, those of you that are there, those of you that are on live stream. Maybe it's you. The enemy has drugged you through. But I hear the word of the Lord say, let God arise now. Let God arise and the accuser be scattered. Father God, I thank you for the power of your blood as we come before your throne on our individual situation. Nobody but you, Lord, can fix it. Nobody but you can vindicate us. The devil is a lie. Father, we thank you now for your healing power. Let your healing power be released where the accuser came to kill, steal, and destroy us. We release the healing power of Jesus Christ. Now, as you're standing here, I want you to see the throne room. I want you to see God's throne. Can you imagine it now? I want you to see his throne, and I want you to see yourself going before his throne and bowing down. Do you see it? I want you to see it. And he has his hand stretched out to us this morning. He's saying, come. Come. I've been waiting for you to press charges against the accuser, against the slanderer. He says, I've been waiting for you to come. Come up higher. Come up past the Supreme Court. Come up higher than that. God says, I am here. And I release to you vindication. And God says, for some, I'm opening a door. The enemy blocked you. You couldn't get through the door. Every time you get close, watch it, watch it. Every time you get close to a new door, the, the enemy will slam that door. But at the throne, I'm opening the door. And you got to see it. I want you to see it. Yes. Some of you see it. But you had to get high above your circumstance. Call unto me. And I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things that the enemy blocked you and stole from you. Thank you, Father, for your healing. We've come to press charges. And Father, I thank you that you judge the enemy now, that he's judged and he's stripped and his assignment has failed because we've come to the courtroom this day. Open the heavens, Father. Open the doors. And we will give you the glory. And we'll give you the honor. In Jesus' name. That's it. Your hand. Just receive it. Keep your eye on the throne room. Keep your eye on the throne room. The court of heaven. Somebody may ask you today, where have you been today? Say, I went to court. <laughs> I had to go to court on Sunday, yep. Yeah. Everything we need is in the court of heaven. So, Father, we seal this time today. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name.